Guys, I've been trying to get my hands on a plasma cutter for years now. I finally saw this one that's so cheap, I was so curious on it, I had to get my hands on one. Today, I'll be using the Best Arc Cut 55. This is a 110 and 220 volt plasma cutter, and it is one of the cheapest on the market. So let's see what this thing can do. To start off with this thing, I wanted to make sure it checked a couple boxes, even before I began with it. So it had to have pilot arc start. What that's gonna do is allow you to start this torch anywhere not even touching your workpiece. So you could literally start it in the air just like this by a click. When I turn it on here in a second, I'll show you how it works. Yeah, kind of like that. But that prevents you from having to strike an arc on your workpiece, um, which can be kind of a pain. So the machine actually creates that arc for you for a couple seconds. You can change that on the interface here. And then once it makes that pilot arc and then makes the arc with your workpiece as it's cutting, it will never stop cutting until you lose contact uh, with your workpiece. The next thing I needed was it had to be 110 and 220 compatible. So this thing comes with a plug uh, that goes from the 220 plug right to 110, it's that easy. Once you plug it into 110, it automatically changes, it automatically knows uh, what voltage you're running. So you will be able to plug it into 110 and use it just like, just like any other plasma cutter. I will say there is a drawback with 110. The amperage from 110 you're just not gonna get the most out of, out of your plasma cutter on 110. The cuts will not go as deep, you're gonna have to go a little bit slower, but it does still work. Now, if you plug it into 220, you can get the full 55 amps out of this thing, and that's where you're really gonna see this thing shine. For a small garage plasma cutter, a 110 plasma cutter to cut any body panels, any kind of uh, you know, things you're gonna mess with in your garage, go-karts, lawnmowers, anything like that. Maybe not uh, super thick fabricated steel, but hey, it's just a garage plasma cutter and this thing's 150 bucks. So we're gonna use it on 110. Next item that it has to check is an air regulator system. So this thing does not have a regulator incorporated into the back of it. Some of them do. If that's something you need, then make sure you're looking at that in the description. But it does come with a regulator that you can use uh, with your own airlines. It does come with some airlines, but they are a little cheap and I don't know if I would want to use those. But I do have a regulator and filter system already on my wall. So that wasn't 100% necessary for my use case. A lot of people might not have a filter system or a regulator already. So this one comes with it. You might as well use it if you don't have one. For a cheap plasma cutter like this, you're gonna wanna be able to get your consumables like your tips uh, very easily. So these can be easily purchased on Amazon. Um, they also come, this one comes with three separate tips, uh, three of the inner tips as well. Um, that's for the arc starting, but this thing um, does come with enough to get you started for sure. Um, and if you're careful with them, uh, they can last a long time. So they are easy to purchase uh, just right here on Amazon. I'll link down below if you need more tips, but that is a plus that these are cheap because anytime uh, you wanna go use your plasma cutter and realize you already burnt up your tips, you wanna get them quick, and cheap, hit them up on Amazon and there you go. The expensive plasma cutters run water through the head here to keep everything cool. That's gonna really help out with your tip life. Now these things don't have anything like that, but they do have what's called post flow. So you'll be cutting your workpiece like this and then once you let go of the trigger, it will continue to flow air through the tip and that's gonna cool everything down. So it helps uh, cool the tip and hopefully extends that life of the tip a little bit longer. Setting this thing up is super easy, guys. All we're gonna do is plug it in right now. I'll turn it on on the back. I've got my air coming into the back of the machine. You'll see it kicked on in the 110 volt setting. And we're able to 
change all kinds of things here. So you can go up to 35 amps on 110. 210 will allow you to go to 55 amps. Uh, you need to be at above 30 to be cutting quarter inch steel. So 110 should be good for most of what you're gonna do. You're gonna set your regulator for 110 between 30 and 50 PSI. So we've got it set right at 40. This thing gives you the option to change your pilot arc length of time. So you can go from down from three seconds all the way up to 15 seconds. Uh, that would be probably helpful if you're cutting something like mesh or something that has like a crappy surface on it or something. This pilot arc will just continue to run for 15 seconds. Um, if you think you're gonna cut for a lot longer than 15 seconds, I'd probably back that to around, you know, the shorter mark from three to five seconds-ish. Then you'll push this button and this gives you the post flow time. So that's the amount of time that the air is flowing through the nozzle. We'll set that up to 10 seconds just to try to keep this thing cool. If you push this knob, you can see it switches from plate steel to mesh. So it does have different settings for that. And then that's where you set your amperage as well. It does have a couple different features where this 2T button, um, you can choose between 2T and 4T. Um, 4T basically means you can push the trigger and then let go and it will continue to cut. And then to stop it, you'll push the trigger again. I like to keep it on the 2T setting, which means you just hold the trigger down whenever you're cutting. We also have a button over here that is, right now it's set to cut, or you can push it and it will check your airflow. So you'll look at your regulator, make sure, oh, we're running a little less than 30. I can bump that up to approximately 40 and then go back to cut and it will stop flowing air. Let's check out everything you get when you buy one of these plasma torches. So obviously you get the torch, that's just gonna plug in right to the machine with these three wires. So this is gonna be your trigger switch here. This is another cable that plugs in and then this cable uh, right here will plug in and this will feed the air. You also get a grounding clamp. I'm not gonna lie, this thing feels extremely cheap, uh, but it looks like it's gonna work. We got the copper. They also uh, provide different fittings in there um, and this sort um, of flexible it seems like here. it has a pretty strong and spring strength. So I think this is gonna last, but uh, this might be one of those things that might be the first thing to fail. They also provide um, this sort of flexible airline here. And this is uh, probably just gonna barely get you by. I would recommend, you know, running your own airlines and fittings and stuff like that. Guys, one thing we do need to talk about before we get to cutting is the air that's going into your plasma cutter. It must be extremely dry. I know they give you a water separator or water filter with it, but it is very important to make sure the air coming out of your compressor is as dry as it can be. I've got a paint setup right here that I actually built in a different video. I will link down below. I built the compressor myself, and then we built this uh, copper piping here to dry the air and cool it down. And then we've got filtration and water separators and then a desiccant uh, dryer here. But if you get any water that runs through your plasma torch and gets to your tip, that is going to ruin the tip very, very fast. And that's just gonna be super annoying. If you're trying to cut and you're spraying a little bit of water through there, your tip starts to blow out and then you can't even use it anymore. All right, guys, let's start cutting some body panel sheet metal. Uh, we got the Nasty Nate uh, bed side here, or the little corner of the bed. So we will be chopping this thing up here in a second, see how this thing does, and then we'll test it out on some thicker sheet metal. One thing I'm gonna recommend is to have your ground as close to your workpiece as possible. I've got a welding table here, but you definitely don't wanna have the ground way over here when you're trying to cut, because the most important thing is having a good electrical connection between the piece you're trying to cut and your machine. So we're gonna either put it here or directly on the workpiece. And we've actually got some of this sheet metal ground down. So it's gonna be better to clamp it like that. And I'm gonna cut this piece in half.
See that post flow? And there's the compressor. All right, guys, you can see this edge right here. It does have some slag or some dross on the back of the cut. That is from the metal that's melting through here, obviously. But that is going to happen when you have a cheap plasma cutter. Um, if you're concerned about that, it's gonna be super easy to grind off. And also, it might not work on this, but a thicker piece of metal, you would be able to, you would be able to kind of chip it off just like that. It's not gonna work right here. I'm gonna have to destroy this piece if I do that. So I would probably just grind that off. Another thing I wanna show you is the plasma cutter is gonna follow exactly how your hand movement goes. So right here is where I was trying to round this corner and I got kind of crazy with the torch and it's gonna, it's gonna show that. So make sure you're following exactly where you wanna cut or if you have some kind of or if you can't hold the torch perfectly steady, what you can do is have a piece, something like this, where you can follow the line. So let's try that. We're gonna try to follow that line closely there. Actually, I'll just, I'll put this up like this and we'll see how straight of a cut we can get. This piece, I don't want to touch it because it's going to be hot. This piece isn't going to fall right off. That's because I went extremely fast with this thing. So I know this sheet metal is thin, but that was moving too fast. So let's slow it down a little bit. You saw the sparks kind of shooting all over the place. You don't want to see sparks shooting out like this. You want to see them shooting straight through your piece. That means you're actually cutting through the entire sheet. So let's try that again. All right, guys, we got a pretty straight line. This stuff that you see is from the previous cut, so it's kind of all over the place. Um, but that line right there is very straight. So had I not gone too fast in the beginning, uh, that probably would look a lot better. All right, you saw where I was cutting from the edge of a piece, but if you wanna make a hole in your part, you're gonna, you don't have an edge to start from. So that's called a plunge cut with a plasma cutter. So. You want to hold the torch at a 90 degree angle from your workpiece, but you never want to start a plunge cut like that. Because if you can imagine, this thing is trying to melt the metal through the sheet that you're cutting. If it's really thick, you're gonna start melting your top surface and the sparks will have nowhere to go but back up, upwards. So you're gonna see sparks start to shoot upwards until it melts all the way through the plate. And if you're shooting it directly back into your tip, it's just gonna ruin your tip almost instantly. So you wanna be careful of that. You want to start at an angle to get it started, and then we'll come to a 90 degree angle to your part, and then we'll make a circle. So let's, let's see what we can do here. That's a perfect plunge cut. You see that pilot arc start in the beginning and that will really help your plunge cut. It's gonna leave a little bit of, you know, some, some mess on, on the outside. So if this was the case, if this was a circle I was trying to cut, I'd probably wanna start towards the middle, get it through, and then move to your outline, cut your outline, and then punch it through. This thing is doing a great job cutting sheet metal like this, but I do want to see if we can cut anything thicker. I'm gonna try to cut this quarter inch plate using that angle, that weld angle as a straight edge. Try to go through that whole thing. 
I'm gonna crank the amps up all the way on 110, which is 35. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, I just blew the breaker, which is not good because this thing needs some continuous airflow. I'm gonna, I just hit the air check button just to blow some air through here. And uh, we'll continue cutting in just a second. Guys, this thing, this thing really just cut through quarter inch. I mean, it did blow the breaker once. It's a 20 amp uh, breaker. Did blow it once. I cut through quarter inch. It's honestly a pretty clean cut. It's extremely straight because I was going against that, that angle iron there. And then there's a little bit of slag on the back, but that would be pretty easy to clean up compared to cutting this whole thing, you know, with something else. I'll be honest guys, this little plasma cutter is pretty impressive. Quarter inch cutting on 110. I mean, I'll probably never cut something this thick. I'll never need to. The thickest thing that I'll probably cut is like bumper brackets or, or like a frame rail or something that I'm just trying to cut off for no reason. Like I'll be cutting exhaust, sheet metal, body panels, stuff like that. So this thing is gonna do wonders in my shop. It's also extremely tiny. Look at that. I can pick it up just like that. We can store this thing anywhere. Yeah, that thing's pretty warm from cutting quarter inch. That fan might run in a little while. The Best Arc Plasma Cutter is the perfect addition to any garage or small shop space. It's so small, it weighs almost nothing and it actually cuts pretty well on 110. I would totally recommend this thing. Uh, for 150 bucks on Amazon, you can't beat it, and I can't wait to use it on the next project.